Hi, it's me. I'm back in the tree house. As you can see, it's early. I'm opening my store today, which is kind of nice because it's like relaxing and I have time to eat and just relax before work. I was feeling, um, you know, on my way to work, I was thinking about uh, a video I wanted to make and why don't I make it now? And I was inspired by this YouTuber I really love, Kim Love. I'll link her below and Kim is basically, I know Kim because she's been watching me and she was doing keto with me and we were into paleo or whatever. She lost like 50 pounds and um, then I started eating vegan and not long after that she also started eating vegan so I'm a fan of hers and her channel is really good so I'll link it below. And <clears throat> she recently made a video that was just like a story of her veganism just a general background and I thought I would record something like that because I have several reasons why I went vegan really it's not just one it's not like I watched earthlings and then that was the end of it for me no it's a little more complicated than that so why don't I start from the beginning and the beginning for me actually starts a very long time ago I'm talking Maybe, like, my earliest memories that you have memories that you're old enough to remember. I don't know, maybe four years old? Like, around that time, basically. And I remember around that time just feeling weird about eating meat. I thought it was weird <laughs> that we're eating, like, dead animals. And I also started to think that milk was weird too because I just was old enough to know that it came from a cow and it was for baby cows and I just thought it was weird though around that time I was really into milk and I was drinking it a lot and um, yeah whenever I brought up anything like that it was probably very annoying for my parents. Can, can you imagine me saying hey I don't want to eat meat anymore when friggin there's probably already ground beef defrosting on the counter for dinner. <laughs> I was old enough to know that me not eating meat was an inconvenience, is what I'm getting at. That sound, by the way, is a ghost. We don't know what that is. It's some kind of electrical something, I'm assuming. It's very loud and scary. Anyway, so I was old enough to know that not eating meat was going to be annoying, so I dropped it. You know, I after the first time of me saying to my dad, hey, I don't want to eat meat anymore, and it was weird. Uh, this is... I bet too much. This is basically oats and berries and some... Uh, I put some maple syrup in here too, but it's not thick enough and I think I'm gonna microwave it a little longer. Anyway, so friggin... Yeah, I dropped it and then let's fast forward some time, then I get older. I, um had weight problems as long as I can remember. As long as I was socialized with the other kids, like I guess since I've been in school or preschool or whatever, I was aware of the fact that I was bigger than the other kids. The other kids made it very known to me. And, um, and I was eating, you know, normal. I, I think, um, thinking about it, I think I was eating, like, I don't know. I, I think it was pretty healthy, though maybe... Um, I did like to eat a lot, and by a lot I mean large quantities, when I was alone. Like say I came home from school and I was alone, I would eat whatever I wanted. I, I would look forward to that. Also Saturday mornings and Saturday morning cartoons and cereal, I would look forward to it all week. I just really, I did really like to eat and it was all probably mostly junky stuff looking back on it, but whatever. The point being is that I continued to be heavy. Um, around high school, I do remember at one point I was almost 300 pounds, and I think it was at that point was when I made my first real attempt at dieting. I had dieted a few times with my mom before then. My mom was always on something, like eggs and grapefruit, or like Atkins or whatever. So this time, I was like, I, I, there was some news thing about the Atkins diet, and about how maybe we were wrong about fat, and how fat doesn't make you fat and so I saw the news report and I was like you know what I'm gonna do this this shouldn't be too hard it just 
just we had meat and vegetables for dinner usually anyway so I would just skip whatever the starch was and I don't know I did lose about 50 pounds that time I think I was a junior or something in high school I don't remember you know what though it didn't it never it didn't last I mean that's the thing I ended up gaining it back when I started probably going crazy because I missed carbs because carbohydrates are your body's primary source of energy <laughs> so it was probably just missing carbs eating carbs and I gained it back so that was my first real diet whatever and then let's let's fast forward a little more and then <laughs> around um, then in my early 20s my weight started to really become a problem. I was over 300 pounds. I uh, was diagnosed with MS. Um, things really kind of fell apart. And um, actually around 2008, this is, I've never talked about this before, but I developed, I had an eating disorder. I was basically, I was bulimic between 2008 and 2000, maybe 10 or 11. And um, it was actually really horrible because it was really secret. No, no one knew. Um, even Nikki Stanley Wake didn't know, and I still feel bad about that. And um, so that was going on. I actually lost about a hundred pounds during that time. During those years, I was bulimic. Though when I stopped throwing up, it took me three years to lose that weight. Yeah, well, it took me. Maybe at my highest, I was around 320. I got down to like 220, and then I got back up to like 280 in like 2011. And that's really when I started tracking my weight um, around 2011. And I started trying to eat healthy. I was like, F this, no more diets. I started eating paleo. Around, I think it was 2011, I stopped eating gluten because. It was giving me hives and all sorts of really searing heartburn and all sorts of other problems. I just cut it out. Around then was when I realized that truly what we eat matters. The whole gluten thing really changed my mind. So, I, uh, yeah, I was bulimic. I never said that to anyone. Basically, around when my JP Match channel started was in the thick of it. I mean, I was extremely into it back then around when the channel started to give you a time frame idea so I lost a lot of weight eating paleo as you guys know um, I got down to a weight that I haven't been in a long time lower than I ever was being bulimic eating paleo I got down to around 195 pounds it's kind of around where I sit today um, and how did I become vegan? Well, around last year, there were a couple reasons that I decided to finally do it. But around last year, I started, I really hate to say, like, I wish I could say it was for ethical reasons. I was really inspired to become vegan. Nah, it was more like I was really missing carbs. I started eating more carbs and I started gaining some weight, even though... I was trying to moderate my carbohydrates or whatever. I was trying to eat reasonably. I still, um, yeah, I gained a couple pounds. And around then, I don't know, you guys were just like really, every once in a while I'd get a comment or message that was like, hey, what about the starch solution? What about the starch solution? What about the starch solution? And maybe. The first time it happened, I looked it up and I dismissed it because I was like, oh, this diet, this looks like some vegan propaganda. But the more you guys told me about it and the more I researched it, the more I started getting into um, really thinking about playing with my macros a little more. Like, I, I had already had experience messing with my macros and that's how I lost so much weight. I was on a high fat low carb diet so I thought well maybe a high carb low fat diet works the same way just in, in reverse somehow so I hate to sit here and say that I went on the starch solution for primarily health 
weight management reasons, but it was something I looked at and I thought, hey, this might help me manage my weight. Maybe I don't have to be low carb for the rest of my life. Maybe it, it wasn't until I was already eating the starch solution for a week or two that I started to investigate the ethical reasons for being vegan because I had already known them. I knew this information was out there. I was just refusing to look at it. And then I started feeling really good about how I was eating. I started to feel good about the fact that I'm not eating no animals. I mean, this is all plants, what I got here, and it's just sitting here. Mm. And that's it. Mm. That's my story. All right, I have to start doing work-related things, so I'm gonna stop. I was sitting here watching that video, seeing if I needed to edit it, and I realized I didn't even get to a really important reason why I wanted to go vegan. Or it was important to me. But look, there's no science behind what I'm about to say. If the unnatural vegan were watching what I'm about to record, <laughs> her eyes would roll to the back of her head and she would be like, I don't know, <laughs> she'd make fun of it. But So you guys know I mentioned I was diagnosed with MS. And my, I was 21, and one of the first things that my doctor told me was, this made me so mad at the time, but she was like, you've got to avoid stress. Stress is one thing, they don't understand much about MS or what causes relapses, but the one thing that is proven that they do know is um, a stressful time. A stressful, um, just stress can cause relapses. and maybe for a couple years now, like years before I went vegan, I, I would look at the meat I was about to eat and I would think about the, the short, stressful life that this animal probably lived. Even, you know, like free range meat, organic, whatever, I didn't buy it. Even when I was paleo, when paleo was all about, you know, eating uh, free-range, organic, um, eating sustainably. And, um, but, but I knew, I, I just wasn't impressed by the FDA standards for free-range. I was thinking about this animal that lived such a short, stressful life, and I was thinking, I, I just couldn't help but think about me being nourished by this, the flesh of this animal that's so that lived and died so stressed out there there is no science behind this there is no this is all hocus pocus but I really just didn't want to nourish myself by that stress anymore I made the point so I can stop recording this is done